Welcome back everybody to the land of grifting for what will be the last episode in this Rook's Brawl. We're about to go up against, I think it's always the Bark, the big boss, Bark, Bark boss. Um, not, we're not yet, we have a negotiation to go first. Well, two negotiations because we also want to get another party member. But then, then it'll happen. Lots of stuff there, alright. A head split early on doesn't seem half bad, especially with all these arguments around. I think we'll take a head split. Can we rig in the first turn then? Oh, we discard a random card and we discarded that one. Alright, too bad. And we cannot gamble, so we cannot get the visionary bluff for free. In fact, if I play that one, it'll the, prepare the card that we get, so we cannot get this visionary head turner prepared that way. Which means what? How do we approach this? Red herring and boosted pressure, I think. Ah, oh, this one's tricky. Tricky, tricky. Red herring would get destroyed immediately, but then... I mean, right now... We're taking the damage on what? This prey of Hesh? Yeah, so let's not. Let's have a red herring tank it. Oh, we still have an action then, huh? Because we start with the next action, right. Hmm. Huh. Should have opened with the visionary bluff then. I doubt that this will be super good. It does give us some composure somewhere, but it could go anywhere. I don't think that's the way to do it. Let's just deal 1 to 4 damage. Over here. 1. Okay. Oh, this could be bad. Like, this could be a loss. Head turner will gain us an extra action, which is quite nice. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, we've got an interrogate plus asset that has been deployed. Let me make sure I hit that one. And again, probably. Oh, here's the head split. Can we rig? No. So let's just play it and see what we get. We got it. That's a lot of damage. Here's a pale strategy. I will play it. And then the Pale Disregard. Giving us a ton of composure. Then the stacked deck. Twisted deck, obviously. And then... <laughs> we have this Rise Manifesto that we've been carrying for almost the entire game. And it's still, I mean, there's no, there's one more negotiation coming. Might as well save it for that one, right? Oh, we didn't have any influence, so that was a bad play. Nah. I'm so used to having plenty of influence with this build. Twisted Dead Draw is quite nice, but all influence, no, and then gain momentum. Momentum is not good for us. It's based on discards, so we'll get the Twisted Dead Draw. For free, sure. Choose a card to repair. Uh, there's nothing here that benefits off of being prepared, so it doesn't matter. Twisted Dead Draw. Let's see what we get. Mm. Oh, we don't want to rig because this one is based on snails, so it's perfect that we haven't rigged anything yet. Oh, so then meanwhile, while we are on heads, though, we should play the boosted headbang if we want to play it. Good question. What's happening other other than that? Uh, yeah, we probably should headbang. This is kind of a bad turn, but we'll be drawing some cards. Good stuff might happen. And we hit snails. We are so lucky. Gives us the Bark Enlightenment then, and the War Story. Oh, we can rig that one. 
which is probably worth it. Prepare a card. Doesn't matter. War story. All right. And a, a good amount of composure on our main argument here is going to be great. Yeah, we took no damage. Nice. We lost the strategy, but that's fine. We can do a, a disregard here, which is fine. Choose a card to prepare. That would be the... Oh, good, two good choices here. How much damage do we have incoming? None. None? Wow. Uh, so I'll take the visionary hit turner then. Really, none? Oh no, here. Hmm. I thought we could see it before, but it doesn't matter. This is the final turn. We have lethal. So, I mean, we will play the card draw, I suppose. I don't think there's anything that needs XP. Oh, the compromise. Okay. Can we draw into it? Theoretically, we could. Yeah, let's uh keep going here. No compromise, okay. And the question is, do we take damage? Yeah, seven and nine, so we will take two and then heal for three. So we are healing by one by ending the turn. Do it. Disregard, disregard again? Yeah. There's the compromise. Pair a card. That could be lethal. Let's see. If, oh, not if I click here then. Because then it doesn't prepare. Play the compromise. Head split. And there is the lethal. All right. Red Herring and Stack Deck. Red Herring goes cheaper. Stack Deck goes cheaper. Oh, we still have to fight him. Alright. That's fine. Should be relatively quick. We get, what, a 50% chance to stun. Adrenaline shot. Tripwire. Okay, poor guy. Do we need card draw? No. And we don't need stun. So, Krill Ikor, to kill him quickly, I'll take the Adrenaline Shot. And just fire it up, I suppose. Play the Garbage Day. Just to get it finally leveled for the final fight. He's a toughie, this guy, but I think we can beat him without too much of a hassle, and... Is he gonna prove me wrong here? Oh, these stupid uh, hasten cards. They are status cards, so they cost one extra because of my uh, social boon here, brutality. So they literally do nothing for us. Dang it. Well, what are we doing here then? Double Shrook Fang. Then we are... Uh, 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 do we have lethal? Th 23... 31... 39... 47... Not really close. The automatic blaster would do it, but then we would lose it. And the, other, the alternative is to take a ton of damage. I'm gonna get the hastens out of the deck. the boosted release valve that did increase his damage taken but not by enough I think so I will automate blast to not take the 22 yeah would have liked to save that one for the boss but it's fine we do not need the spearhead 
so we don't want to finish him. Garbage day can give us draw a card as well, or extra defense. I think draw a card. Get paid. Noise. Block of the swap. Final chance to talk to you if before the boss fight. We have 513. We definitely should do something. Still new, new people here. You don't hate me. All right. We could make friends with someone that we don't know the social boon of. Which I will. Ah, oh, then we get drunk again. Yeah. It's fine. I think we can live through it for future runs. Baka Pauldrons, at the end of your turn, gain one defense for every charge. Okay, well, not a big boon, but it is a boon, and we will take it. Block at the swap, negotiation graft. You can give me the parietal integrator. At the start of each negotiation, discard up to two cards and draw that many new cards, or Saimitar. Saimitar? Saimitar. Hmm. All cards gain one minimum damage. Buy that. And then fight the boss. Convince Tark to help us. You know what, now that I think about it, buying that final negotiation graph was not worth the contaminated equipment. I forgot about that for a second. Muy bad. Head turner. Oh, and it got discarded. Never mind. If you have influence, prepare a card, and we do. Let's play the Rise Manifesto now, because there's no reason not to. Alright. Not the best first turn, but it's a decent one. We got rid of a slurred speech, and the dominance tanks a little bit of damage for me here. A red herring for free. Yeah. Hmm. Play it. War story can we rig? Yeah. Choose a card to prepare. White Jargon. War story. We can level the compromise, which won't do anything, because this is the final negotiation. That's the final countdown. Mm -hmm. Do we do pale disregard here? No. Oh, he got the thing. The thing that we fear the most. Let me show you what I mean. Kingpin. Intense game. Plus one bonus damage for each stack of influence owned by the opponent. And we have nine. So he's doing nine bonus damage just from this one. Then he also has Escalation Plus, which combos off of me playing hostility cards. So he's got the anti-diplomacy and the anti-hostility card uh, arguments both, which is pretty rough. We got to take out the Kingpin for sure. Stacked deck. Tall weight. Arc Enlightenment. We're losing the influence. Yeah. I don't think there's anything to be done about it. Oh. Hmm. This is why I'm not destroying all the other arguments. It's because we have an area attack in the deck. And here it is. It's 50-50 though. I'll do the 50-50. Yeah, we didn't get it. Alright. But we're taking no damage at least. Blockade, white blockade, or enduring cash out. White blockade. Choose a card to prepare. Now nothing here matters. White blockade. No, no, no. Then diversion first, because it combos off of me gambling. Twist to dig. When destroyed, lose 10 shields and you double your actions. 
Go for it. And then boosted headbang. Very, very nice. And a pale strategy to top it off. Alright. We're not even taking any damage here. Great. Final round, I think. Brute. Choose a card to prepare. The head turner. Finish him with a boosted pressure. Just because it's cool. And then that's it. Convince Tark to help you in your upcoming fight. So my party member consists at the end of Centru, Durno, Eskora, Ovulgar, Ionis, Ban, and Tark. Ban hates me, and Centru hates me. We only have two haters in the party. No, no, none of them here really likes me. <laughs> but they'll fight all the all the same. You find your target, Gofriam. Murder time. Let's see if we can lose a, a teammate in this fight. We just gotta stay... Like, the only one we care about surviving is Rook here. We have plenty of reserve fighters. Do we need the card draw from the Cryote Claw? Not particularly. But nothing else here really comes to mind either. I think I'll take the Cryote Claw. I want to play the Pale Offset and... Playing it twice is probably honestly fine here. Creole Claw, draw a card. Missionary Garbage Day, no. Hmm. Kind of a slow first turn. And a slow second turn. Boosted Striker twice. And then tight spot up on Ovalgar. While the slurry could give me rid of a tipsy, I'll do it. We're drawing too many trash cards. There was a stun in there, very nice. We are pummeling this guy, but obviously it isn't going to end with him. Let me do Shrook Fang twice. You know, these cards would be nice to save for the actual fight coming up. Uh, it will be giving me 4 power permanently for the fight. So he's already dying. I don't have to play the Automate Blaster, I'll save it. I don't think I've ever actually killed him before, so I'm not sure what happens then. I'm sure he's still, yeah, he still gets his, uh, get to be eaten, but of course, then, uh, I think this guy gets extra health or something based on how much health he has remaining. So we denied it some. It's going for me with 10 damage. Oh no. I mean, okay, it is, it is about a fifth of my health in one go. So it's fair enough. That's kind of scary, I won't lie. Uh, but we can stun it this turn, so it's all good. Charged disc. Doubled. Oh, see, and it comes into the fight late, and everyone has already gained 6 power by the time it arrived. So, this is actually a really... Uh, the boss... This boss is easier in the Juggernaut mode. There you go. Something to consider. Targeting core. Do the... Quick fire. And then I will do the shot core while I take the damage if we can avoid it. So halfway in first turn. I have a feeling that this will be a very one-sided match. I will double the lift the claw, because why? When we could double the automatic blaster? Because we can double we could be lucky and draw automatic blasters here. We didn't. But we get another shot. Uh, and we got a tripwire. Fair enough. So now we start him. And then an automatic blaster. That is insane. Alright. 
You're starting to get a reputation for violence. <laughs> no kidding. And you win. Completed win a brawl with any character. Oh. First time I do that. Fair enough. So, that's it, folks. And I hope everyone enjoyed the Mutator Madness. I, th I really did think it was fun. If anyone else wants to see some c crazy Mutator Madness, and it goes out to Francisco again, who suggested this uh, set up here. Thank you, thanks a lot. It was interesting to try. And more suggestions are welcome. Um, we can do anything. Might want to make it a bit harder. It did, it did look hard at the beginning, but I think we saw some things throughout this run that made it easier as well. Like the brilliance obviously could be removed if we wanted to straight up make this setup easier, but I would prefer having like a new one. Gi Giant Max is definitely a hard one, but Juggernaut, I, I'm not sure I like Juggernaut. It makes the, the game change in a big way and it, it primarily benefits the player, I feel. So it's it's a huge, huge um, increase in damage dealt overall. There's some turns where we were almost killed if I hadn't like been able to take out the opponents first, obviously. And so that's the Juggernaut playing in. Loyalty obviously makes the game really, really easy. After the first day and a half, because then you've been into boss fights and now have almost a full party. And from then on, having party members in this game is so powerful. But all in all, I enjoyed it. There's some points to spend in perks, but we'll be doing that at the start of the next run. For now, folks, see you guys around. And that's it. Kitchen signing off. Bye-bye.